Hello and welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. My name is Alfonso Peluso and I'm a studio associate professor in the College of Architecture at IIT, the home of the legendary Mies van der Rohe, and I'm also adjunct faculty at Columbia College Chicago in the Interior Architecture program. Shout out to all of my students. I hope you're having a great day. It's a nice sunny fall day here in Chicago and I'm doing great. I hope you're doing great as well. It's been a while since I've made a Revit video and I'm pretty excited about making a series of Revit videos and some of you, some of my students might know that I have a love-hate relationship with Revit. With Rhino, I have a love. I'm in love with Rhino. But with Revit, I love some of the things that it does and I hate some of the other things that it does. So I have a love-hate relationship with Revit. Before we jump into the tutorial, if you have not subscribed, please search me up on Google Alfonso Peluso YouTube and go ahead and click on the red subscribe bar and click on the bell to receive all of the notifications. If you are an architecture or interior architecture student or professional, there is something here for you on this channel. Looking to get to 7,000 subscribers soon, that will be great. Also, if you haven't connected with me on Instagram, connect with me on Instagram at my first name, Alfonso, underscore my last name, Peluso. Love to hear what you're up to. Lately, my Columbia College students are exploring Rhino and the basics of Rhino 3D modeling. My IIT students just finished up their midterm where they're taking their studio project and making it parametrically for my course. All right, let's jump into today's tutorial. So here you have an example of what our end result will be. So this is a, a 4 by 10 sheet of paper and we're exploring line weights. So we have some thick lines, we have some uh, medium lines, and we have some thin lines. I think we can do a better job um, discerning the medium from the thin, so we'll work on that a little bit as we move forward. Okay, so what do we want to do here? We want to open up a new project and we want to make sure that it is an architectural template so that's important there's also from projects here there's architectural template you could go that route but I just wanted to point that out that it's important that it's an architectural template okay so there are three things that we want to set up right from the beginning that are really important for us one is we want to see the origin. At the moment we do not see the origin and in Revit it's actually called a project base point. So to see that we use the shortcut VG no enter just VG on the keyboard. V is in Victor, G is in George, VG and we're going to go down to site scroll down to site. We'll expand site and we're going to click on project base point. Click on apply and OK. And there's our origin. There's our project base point. It has the circle with the X. So that's one of three things that we need to do. The other is we want to turn on the crop region. This becomes very important for us. So we're going to turn on the crop region by saying show crop region. And then that, that folks is our crop region and we'll be working with that later and then the third thing that is really important is the scale of this drawing um, we're just working at one to one so the default is one eighth inch equals one foot so I want to make sure that that is set to one to one so uh, a little tricky sometimes to find where that is here so let's see where it is. I see one inch equals a foot. Here it is. Twelve inches equals a foot. At the very, very top is one to one. Twelve inch equals one foot. Okay, so that's going to be really important for us to set up from the beginning. You see those little camera views for the elevations got really small. That's not so important for what we're doing today. 
Okay, so we're going to zoom in to our project base point a little bit, and we're going to draw our sheet, our 4x10 sheet. So I can click on model line, and the shortcut for model line is LI. So I can click on model line, or I can type LI on the keyboard, and I'm going to choose rectangle from my draw tools here and I'm going to snap to that project base point and I'm just going to draw a rectangle and I'm going to zoom into that okay so now it's really easy for me to change these values so, so from 11 feet I can change that to 10 inches and from 6 feet I can click in here and change that to 4 inches but some people will have hit escape uh, so I just hit escape a couple times and looking at how to set this after I've hit escape after those dimension values are gone so if I click on that line it gives me that dimension so that's going to be my 10 inches and then if I click on this top line that's going to be my 4 inches okay and I zoom in even more okay so here's my 10 inches by 4 inches all right, great. So we're getting there. All right, so we're gonna draw some some lines within here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Now to do this, we're gonna make some line styles. So if I go to Manage from the main menu and I go to Additional Settings, there is something called a line style, and a line style will allow us to make a style that has our line weight and our line type okay so line style and these are all underneath the category lines you see what we drew in right now was green right it had a green green rectangle there so that's just in the line line style but if I click on the plus here whole bunch of these so we're gonna make a new one and I'm going to use my initials. I'm going to call this AP Thick for my thick lines. Okay. And it shows up here. And for the line weight, I'm going to choose something pretty high right now. So I'm going to choose 10 for that line weight. So AP Thick line weight is 10 line weight is 10 line color is black and the line pattern or line type at the moment is solid okay let's go with that okay so now I'm going to type LI which is the shortcut and I'm going to change the line style to AP thick and I'm going to choose a spline and I'm just going to create a very thick spline and I'll make another one of these okay so you see that that line weight is really showing up so how do I adjust the line weight I can go back to manage additional settings and I can go to line styles and click on the plus and go down to where my AP I'm going to make this window if it lets me. Nope, it's not letting me make it smaller. So AP Thick. I'm going to change AP Thick. I can change that to 8. I can leave this window open. If I click Apply, it'll apply it to it. All right. Let's go, let's go with 9. Apply. OK. All right, fantastic. Let's now set up our medium line style. So we'll go to manage, additional settings, line style. I'm going to click on the plus here. I'm going to go to new. I'm going to call this AP medium. So my last one was nine for a thickness. So I'm going to try let's try four for now and we'll click OK 
and I'm going to type li as the shortcut and I'm going to change the line style to AP medium and I'm going to draw a couple lines so it's definitely a lot thinner than the thick but I need to see how that's going to compare to the thin okay I might have to beef beef the medium up a little bit I'm going to draw a circle alright so some of you might be wondering okay how do I trim how do I trim this okay so if we go to modify there's a few different trims but the second one is trim extend single element okay I'm going to click that and then at the bottom it says select a reference as the trim extend boundary I'm going to select this line here and then now it says select a line or wall to trim click on the part you want to keep is what it's asking me so I can click on the part that I want to keep okay let's do that we did it we got to do it each time so here click here click this click what I want to keep Let's try it one more time. Click this, click here, click on the part that I want to keep. So with the circle is a little different. Let's try it one more time. Click here, click the part that I want to keep. Okay, so that was a little bit different. So for depending on the objects, it's a little bit different. I'm going to try it one more time. See here's where here's my love hate relationship now. You're starting to see my love hate relationship with with Revit because <laughs> it doesn't want to trim it the way that I want it to. The other thing to note is that you can't trim the splines, so don't beat yourself up trying to trim the splines. Um, and we're going to be cropping these anyway, so you'll see our crop will also be our trim. I got to try this one more time. Okay. Select a reference as a trim extend boundary. That's this. Select the line or wall to trim. Click on the part you want to keep is is what this says. All right, I want to keep this part of it. But when I click on that, it trims that away. Pretty frustrating. You know, I got to try this one more time. No, oh, that wasn't it. All right. Well, we're going to trim this a different way later. Okay. Sorry about that. All right. I can tell that I'm going to have to make these lines a little bit thicker. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. We'll go to Manage. We'll go to Additional Settings. We'll go to Line Styles. We'll go down to AP Medium. And we'll make AP Medium. Let's try a 5. Apply. All right. Let's go with that. Okay, a couple more. Let's make, let's go to manage, additional settings, line styles. Click to expand the lines. Let's make a new one. This is going to be AP thin. Okay, I'm going to keep the line weight at one. And let's just draw, let's draw some things. Let's type in LI. Draw, draw a line. That's AP medium. So I did not change it to AP thin. Okay. That's looking pretty good. Let's try this again. LI. Let's draw a spline. Oops. Need to set this to AP thin first. Tell it I want to draw a spline. <coughs> Excuse me.
excuse me. All right. Now, lastly, I want to look at line types. We have not looked at line types. Very simple to do that. We'll go to manage, we'll go to additional settings, we'll go to line styles. Click on our lines. I'm going to make a new one. This one's going to be AP thin. I'm going to call it dashed. Okay, AP thin dashed. Okay, so it's a thin. I'm going to leave it at one. Line color is still going to be black, but instead of solid, I'm going to choose dashed. And I have dash 1 16th. Dash 1 8th, those will get bigger. Dash 3 32nd, it'll get bigger. Um, I don't know why there's two dash 3 32nds. But I'm going to choose dash 1 16th. Okay. Type in my shortcut li. Make this AP thin dashed. And let's draw. Alright, so there you see some dashed, dashed lines. You know, I'm still bothered that I can't trim that circle. But I'm going to stay away because I spent enough time messing around with that. Okay. So let's make, let's make another drawing because I know I'm asking my Columbia students to make four different drawings. So I'm just going to, they're not allowed to just copy paste this down, but I'm just going to copy and paste this. I can't, I can't copy the project base point. It'll give me, it'll give me an error. If I try to do that. So let's try this again. Yeah, let's see what happens. Okay, if I type that, type in CO for copy, yeah, it's going to give me an error. So just keep in mind, it's because of this project base point. So I want to remove that project base point, which is going to be my shift key. Okay, let's see. Now, now it's going to let me copy it. I'm going to copy it down. Okay. Okay, so next thing is we're going to set up a crop region. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and look at our crop region. So I thought we had it out here. So let's. I gotta probably zoom way out. There it is. It's way out there. So I'm gonna have to select this and make it smaller. And what I wanna make what I wanna do is I wanna make it the size of the four by ten drawing. Alright, so I'm gonna make it a lot smaller. Zoom on in here. So you see it's starting to, to crop the view. So I'm going to put it right at where the green line is. I can go a little bit inside it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. So that's cropping it. Now we're going to print Okay. All right. So we're going to go ahead and print this. So we're going to go to File, Print. And we want visible portion of current window. Pretty sure that's what we want. Visible portion of current window. Now, if I go to making sure that this is Adobe PDF, if I go to Properties, this looks the same as it always has or always does, depending on, or it doesn't matter what software you're in. So we looked at making uh, 4 by 10 sheets before so the same way you've made 4 by 10 sheets and for those of you looking to make a 4 by 10 or a custom sheet I'll put a link to custom sheets in Adobe Acrobat just by going to you know add and making a custom paper size there okay so there's the 4 by 10 
there is a preview. Okay, that preview doesn't look doesn't look right to me. It looks four by ten, but the drawing that's fitting in it is not four by ten. So let's let's troubleshoot this. We have this at twelve inch equals one foot. Let's ah, I know why. Okay, so let's go to file print not visible portion of current window that's what it was showing us this needs to be current window okay I'm glad that I make these mistakes because I'm sure that you guys will make these mistakes at home as well so it's better to enforce that so that needs to be current window let's do a preview on that alright that looks right alright so I can I could just print that Let's see what happens when we print this. All right, so that opens up an Acrobat as a 4 by 10 sheet. So you see there's some adjustments I would go in and make and uh, probably make my crop window a little bit bigger. Okay, so now if I want to print the drawing that's below it I just move my crop window down and line it up with the other drawing so you can line that keep lining that crop window up with each one of your uh, four drawings alright I think that covers it all if you like this video and you found it helpful please click on a thumbs up below leave a comment tell me why you found it helpful click on my head here in the upper left to subscribe to my channel and I'll post some videos in the upper right and in the lower right see you next time